Welcome to the Iroquois Indian Museum. My name is Mike Tarbell. I am the educator here. Um, my Mohawk name is Lahale. So Lahale, yuck, I thought was Aslana. I am, he waits. And I come from the land where the partridge drums. I've been with the museum about 25 years now. And uh, when I first came here, my cousin clan mother from Onondaga approached me and she said, I hear you're taking that job at that museum. And she said, please bring our ancestors into this modern time in a better light. So the histories that I learned as a child, both in school and then at home, were different histories. And whenever I came home from school, my grandpa would approach me and say, especially when we were uh, studying about New York State Indians, what did you learn today? And I would explain to him, and then he says, well, I have something, he says, another way of looking at that moment. And so those histories that I learned in school never quite married up with the histories that I learned at home. My grandpa, and today in this moment, I would call him a recording secretary for the Grand Council. He would go to the Grand Council and he would put everything in memory. He had total recall and a photographic memory. But he never went to school. He couldn't read or write uh, his own name. And my grandma, uh, she was uh, a medicine person. And so when we were young and when we got sick or injured, most of the time what would heal us would be the medicines that she took from the natural world. And so my native education basically was that um, my grandparents were my teachers. Uh, my grandma, in time, they probably started about when I was seven, eight, nine years old, and uh, I would go with her. She would ask me to go with her to gather the medicines, and I carried that burlap bag that she put the medicines in. And usually in that bag there were uh, a water bladder, and a spoon. Uh, she had an apron on that had a work, uh, had a pouch in there uh, underneath it. And in that pouch is where she carried what we call the Yekwe Horn, which is the sacred tobacco uh, that she would use uh, in a ceremony after she gathered the medicines. Now, I was exposed to a lot of that, but it wasn't like she grabbed me and said, you need to learn this. I was exposed to it, and what uh, she would do after she took what medicines that she needed, uh, she would take from the, uh, that burlap bag, uh, take out that spoon, and she would loosen the earth around each of the medicine plants that she left behind. And then she would take the water bladder, and she would put water around each of the plants, giving them a drink of water. And then she would take out uh, some matches that she had. Now she's not going to use a stick and rub a stick together or anything. But she would use that to create a fire, a small fire. And she would take from her pouch that tobacco, the yekwe horn. And she would take that and sprinkle it on the open flame. Now the sprinkling of that tobacco on the open flame releases the spirit and the soul to live again. So she released that so that this moment would happen again. And then she would take more tobacco and put it onto the flame to create smoke. And then she would give her thanksgiving. And my grandma, she sang her thanksgiving. So as the smoke rose off that fire, her words of thanksgiving were carried on the smoke to the holder of the heavens, giving thanks for what she had taken. And like I said, for this moment to happen again. My grandfather in this moment, I realized that he was possibly what we would call um, a recording secretary for the Grand Council. What I mean by that is my grandpa never went to school, couldn't read or write a lick, but he had total recall and a photographic memory. And so in that moment, back in the early 50s and stuff, that 
Most everyone couldn't come to Grand Council because they lived far away. And so they would come to visit my grandpa throughout the rest of the summertime, usually on the weekends. And I would witness them coming down the road, some of them on crutches with canes, carrying garment bags that had wampum belts and wampum strands and strings and copies of old treaties and some uh, real treaties. And my grandpa would give them the Grand Council meeting word for word. But the most important time for me was when the sun went down. And so all business is put away, and now these old men would start talking about the days of their grandfather's grandfathers. And this is how I learned history. And this is when my grandma would bring out the molasses cookies and the glass of milk. And so I would eat the cookies and drink the milk and listen to these old men talk about those long ago days of yesteryear. I learned about the dark times, and I haven't quite put a date on that moment, but it was when we, I think, failed to live within what the Creator had provided. Um, there were things that were happening that we didn't understand, and the only way to react to that was to sacrifice someone, and usually it was someone from another area, and so it became innocent warfare, where you couldn't trust anyone, and, uh, and we were failing at the creation. And so this is the time of the coming of the peacemaker. And the peacemaker will come amongst us, he's a great prophet messenger, bringing us the means to live within what the Creator had provided, to live properly, to show honor and respect to use and take just what you need from that natural world out there. And so the forest became a classroom and we learned all about how to use it and to show honor and respect. He did away with death because we didn't understand why people were dropping so quickly and Going through a mourning moment, we were constantly in a state of mourning. And so he did away with death and created a world where nothing would ever die. Believing everything has a spirit and a soul. And that way you cannot do away with spirit and soul. It is a continuum. So when we understand that, our whole existence, our form of government, our understandings. That is a continuum. And what you call life today, we call the dream. And so in that dream, we learn how to live within, like I said, what the Creator provided. And realizing everything has a song, or excuse me, has a spirit and a soul, that everything in this creation has its own song its own dance, and its own story. And I use the term story because the story is the history of how things came to be. And so throughout the whole year, we honor everything in its own time. So in your culture, non-native, you have one Thanksgiving a year. I have at least two a day. So when I awaken in the morning, I give thanks to the creation. And in Mohawk, it's Aliwapakwadniha. No, I didn't say that right, I don't think. Uh, the words that come before all else. What I just said before, that was the color purple uh, and everything. So, um, so Another translation in English is the words that come before all else. So it's the words that I say before I begin my day. And it will be the words that I say before I close my eyes at night. And I give thanks to the creation. This morning I gave thanks because I woke up. And it's a beautiful day. Even if it was raining outside, it is still a beautiful day. I am awake and prepared to enjoy it. Tonight before I go to sleep, again, the words that come before I go to sleep at night. And tonight I will include everyone here as a part of my Thanksgiving. 
So it's my responsibility, my duty, to thank the Creator for you. And, but we also, when we gather politically or socially, that as that group comes together, we will have another Thanksgiving. And then before we leave, again, another Thanksgiving. So up to four Thanksgivings a day, but really two, one in the morning uh, and one at night. Um, when we're born, we're given a name. And that name is so important because that makes us responsible for our actions in the dream. So that when time comes and we're going to leave the dream and we journey down the pathway of the souls and we go before the holder of the heavens, he knows exactly who we were in the dream. And he will make us accountable for all of our actions. And so we're kind of put into a, uh, a schedule or a uh, system that we have to do good. And if we do bad, then that determines how we enter the next phase in the land of the strawberries. So Thanksgivings, um, even if you heard two Thanksgivings, uh, like I said, you'll never hear the Thanksgiving the same way twice because it's personal. So my Thanksgiving is different than someone else's Thanksgiving on stuff. So I just wanted you to understand where that Thanksgiving comes from. So it's something that we do every day and it has to be sincere. Uh, and that's why it's personal. It's the same way with another aspect in our understanding of the cleansing for the warriors. And what happens is that uh, we don't have to talk through anyone. We are talking directly to the holder of the heavens, asking to be forgiven. And you have to be sincere. Do you really want to be healed? And that is the main thing. So sincerity. And keeping up with my charge that my clan mother gave me my cousin clan mother to bring our ancestors into this modern time in a better light. My duty is to show you and teach you that we're different, not according to what is behind those two hard covers in the history books and stuff. So we're human beings, just like you. Uh, we believe in a creator and we live by his means and his way. And so, in that respect, as I said many times before, uh, we just didn't hide behind trees out here to wait for somebody to come by so we could club them. So I hope that you understand what the Thanksgiving is. And each of you have a Thanksgiving. And you need to put one together for yourself. And you don't need anyone to talk through. You can talk to the holder of the heavens yourself. If you did that, he was there when you did it. And so he'll be waiting for you to ask to be forgiven. So until we meet again, it doesn't end here. So a friend of mine taught me something. And so, Eskonge on Yahweh. Have a wonderful, peaceful life. And on until we meet again.